In this problem, we're going to find the electric field outside of some volumetric sphere that has a charge density of rho right here, and it has a radius of r. So we'll go ahead and start with the first case right here. We have to do inside and outside, but we'll just start with the, uh, the outside right now since that's the easier one on the outside. Our variable r is greater than the constant variable, uh, the radius of the, the sphere right here. So the, our electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi, of course. But here's the thing. In a previous problem, we found in a spherical shell that has a perfect symmetry, we found that the electric field uh, on the outside of the uh, spherical shell is, can be approximated to the point charge as a point charge whose value of the charge is equal to the entire charge of that sphere uh, evaluated at that one point. So I know that we have something a little bit different right now where it's a solid sphere, but just imagine multiple shells that are just, uh, you know, packed on top of each other until they become a perfectly uh, volumetric sphere. It ends up being the same thing. So, uh, so you can, if you want to, you can go ahead and rework the problem with a dr and just add them all up. It ends up being the same thing where you just collapse all those spheres down to one point and just add up the charge, the total charge. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're just skipping all that fancy... Uh, calculus and everything like that and just going to go ahead to the the end answer where we just evaluate this as a point charge for the electric field that's located at the center of this sphere that has some charge q and that was stated in the problem that we need to um, just express it in terms of charge q so seemingly too easy right now for the outside but for the inside it's a little bit more challenging not necessarily hard but just a little bit more challenging we got going on on the inside is uh, what we would call a uh, we could use for the principle of superposition. So if we have it at some point p, and I know I just drew a shell here, but that's imagine that's just a cross section of the sphere that we have up here. What we have here uh, is uh, is two things going on. What we found out from a previous problem is that if we evaluate the electric field inside a perfectly symmetrical shell, assuming this is again a shell and a spherical charge. Uh, a perfectly symmetrical shell, the electric field everywhere on the inside of it, assuming perfect symmetry, like this is a perfect circle, is equal to zero everywhere inside of it, right? But however, what we have going on in a volumetric uh, solid sphere is that we just imagine just thousands and thousands of infinitely small um, shells being packed on top of each other. So no matter what point that we have here, in the uh, inside the sphere, there's always going to be some amount of shells on the outside. So we have some sort, some number of shells on the outside, and some number of shells on the inside. And so what we can do with our, in our mind is kind of split these up into two different, um, two different cases here. One where we have a sphere here, smaller one. So this big one is just going to be the ones on all the ones on the outside. So what we have here is that we're evaluating one where the points on the uh, inside and one where the points on the outside, this one being the smaller ones on the inside. And uh, in here, we can actually, I'll go ahead and turn this into, just color this in. And just, I'll leave these empty right now just to show everything. So well, we can apply what I just talked about. So imagine all these spherical shells on the outside but every concentric shell on the outside contributes nothing to the electric field based off of that previous problem. And if you're a little bit confused, I'd highly recommend going back and reviewing that problem. as a uh, problem uh, right before this in uh, uh, the fourth edition. But in this case, what we have is something that's just a little bit smaller than what we exactly have over here. So if we add up those two electric fields right here, and I'll just go ahead and explicitly just put an arrow up here for notes, is uh, that electric field we just uh, add these two electric fields together. That's the beauty of sup uh, superposition. So this one's obviously zero. So we can just go ahead and attack this one right now. This one, of course, if we jump to our point charge approximation, is equal to 1 over 4 pi. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and knock these out right here, these r's, because r is always going to be the same. I should probably do a little bit more explicitly. r is just going to be r, r hat right here. And then what the... And the kicker is that the Q inside, what is the Q inside, right? So what we can evaluate this is, we're going to find some sort of smart way to express this in terms of the total charge density. The, Q, the, the total charge inside is some percentage of the total charge, right? And the way that we can find that total percentage 
It's just doing a ratio of the volumes of what's what's captured inside versus what's captured outside. That's some sort of percentage in the way, of course, that we do that is um, given the information that we know. We'll just do a ratio of the volume. So the volume that's on the outside, on the, well, sorry, volume of the inside, so here to here. So this volume right here, divide by the volume on the outside, which is the volume that's uh, like kind of like this donut, spherical donut, if you will. And then we'll go ahead and do that, uh, divided by the total volume here, and then multiply by the total charge here. And that's what we're going to get. This is going to be in terms of some percentage of the total charge here. We'll go ahead and throw that into our electric field expression here. R hat over R squared. Before I even throw this in here, let's go ahead and just knock out some of these terms. Make things a little bit neater, a little bit faster as we go forward. Ratio of the two uh, radii. All right, and now we have a little bit more things to cancel out. That goes to zero or one, that one goes to just R. And we'll just go ahead and express this and pull that unit vector out. Because the convention, you're free to move that inside or outside, but uh, it's, it's okay if you want to leave it on the inside. There we go, and that units make sense because this ends up being uh, units over one over distance squared. And then finally, our unit vector here. And that is the electric field of the some sort of point that's inside a volumetric uh, symmetrical um, sphere right there. And if you want super duper extra credits, and let me go ahead and highlight that. If you want super duper extra, extra credits, you could recognize that this is actually just the, uh, the unit vector right here, but it's not required. So that's what points right there. And that's going to be useful, right? It's some sort of a ratio right here involving our total charge here. And again, this is going to be one of the foundations that we build upon as we move forward in this course.